Today we're reviewing the Everlywell food sensitivity test. What's cool about this is that it's actually a blood test. You can just order it online and get the kit delivered right to you. So here we have everything we need to take our blood sample. We have gauze, we have two finger prick lancets, an alcohol prep pad, and a band-aid. We also have our biohazard bag that will send our blood test back to the lab in. There's also this quick guide on how to take a blood sample for yourself. It's pretty simple, nothing too complicated. Now we're going to go to the finger prick. Not going to lie, I was pretty nervous for this part, but it really isn't anything to be worried about. First, we're going to clean the finger with the alcohol prep pad. Now it's time to use the lancet for our finger prick. Doing the prick is easy. It hurts less than a horsefly bite. I was surprised how quickly blood started dripping out. From there, it's just a matter of dropping a drip of blood into each of the circles. Don't worry about filling the entire circle. That isn't important. You just need one drip per circle. Now we just wait for our blood sample to dry. That usually takes about 30 minutes. Now that our sample is dried, we can write our information on this little card. Now we need to put the blood sample in the biohazard bag and send it off to the lab. Now we put the blood sample biohazard bag into the box we received the kit in and use the self-addressed envelope to send the sample to the lab. We should get our results in a week or so. I received an email notifying me that my results were in, so now I'm going to the Everlywell website and logging in to see my results. And so here we have the results of my food sensitivity test. Over here I can see that I've been flagged with a low reactivity level for 83 foods and mildly reactive for 13 foods. In this drop down I can see exactly what foods I've been flagged as reactive for. I didn't have any moderate or high reactivities, which was a little disappointing to be honest, but obviously that's not a bad thing. There's also this guide over here to show what's considered low, mild, moderate, and high reactivity. When you click each reactive food, this panel tells you a bit about the food, a bit about what the reactivity level means, and stuff like that. Truthfully, I'd really like to see a little more information here. There isn't much guidance as to whether or not mild or low or reactive foods are worth cutting out of my diet. Even though it says here that this food is flagged for me as a mild reactivity, it's unclear what that actually means in a real world setting. If there are certain symptoms associated with low versus mild versus moderate reactivities, that just isn't really clear here. What I really want to know is, how likely is it that a mild reactive food could be causing problems for me? What symptoms or issues do other people commonly experience with foods they are mildly reactive to? Is it worth trying to eliminate mild and low reactivity foods? I'm not really seeing any answers to those questions here. At the very least, these foods seem like great contenders to start an elimination diet with. I'm really impressed with the scope of foods I've been tested for. It's pretty cool. Now, one thing I didn't know when I took the test is that you're only tested against foods you've consumed in the last 30 days, since that's roughly the amount of time a given food can be detected in your blood. That was definitely not clear to me when I took the test. It's pretty important that you're aware of that fact because if you're already doing some kind of specialized diet, whether that's paleo, keto, or a whole 30, you won't be tested for the full range of foods that you probably want to be tested for. So just make sure you're eating a regular diet for at least 30 days before taking this test because you might as well get tested for as many foods as you can. Ultimately, I think the Everly Well food sensitivity test is a pretty neat test. It's great seeing more tests that traditionally you would have to go to a doctor for in the hands of consumers who want to be their own health advocates. And of course, in many cases, it probably makes sense to take this test to your doctor and work with them to figure out what next steps make sense especially if you're flagged for some high reactivity items. 
I do wish there was more information and guidance regarding what the reactivity levels mean. That really isn't clear with the information currently provided on the website. If you're wondering about your food sensitivities, this Everly Well test is definitely a great start. It's pretty cool to see this big list of foods that could potentially be causing you problems. I can see this being an especially nice compliment to people doing the Whole30 diet since it provides additional guidance about what foods to look out for. If you do decide to give the Everly Well food sensitivity test a try, make sure to use the code LIFEHEALTHHQ for 15% off. I'd also recommend checking out the Everly Well community Facebook group once you've received your results. It's really helpful to jump in there and compare your results with other individuals and see what their experiences have been. There are also some helpful moderators who are pretty great at helping me understand my results better. Have you ever taken the Everly Well food sensitivity test? If so, please share your experience in the comments. We'd love to hear from you.